Hello. Hey, got this thing working again, I think. But uh, hey, let's have a look at the most expensive lathe on eBay, okay? And see just what it is. All righty. So I'll get you hooked up here. Flip you all around. I'll flip you. <laughs> okay. Okay, here it is here. There, give me a little pointer. $32,500, or best offer, it's got 30 people watching it, with uh, 32.5 burn a hole in their pocket, let's see what we got here, let's have a look at this thing, okay, they say it's a 1988, oh, inch metric, let's see what's going on here, it's doing weird stuff. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at it. I think I can get the if I can get the mouse over here. Yeah, you can see here. Okay. Now this is the right hand door right here. See? That's uh right here. That's a, that's the door. Now you see where the you see where the uh, disconnect switch is right here below the control panel, and um, on the vacuum tube ones up to 1983, which is the one I have sitting here, has the disconnect switch sitting right there. Okay. So at a glance, you can tell that this lathe. It's the solid state regenerative drive. At least that's what originally came in this machine, and uh, evidently it's still in there. Okay? That's a full solid state regenerative. Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> kind of have a close look at it. some interesting things here. Okay. Here's the uh, three levers indicating there's three levers that this is an inch metric gearbox. And the, the plaque here for the feeds and threads is larger than the English only. And the English only has a really kind of a cool little window in there and a pointer, but this one does not. So it's just kind of a plain plaque with three levers. Now, on an inch metric machine, they come standard with uh, electric lead screw reverse. So let's go have a look at the right side, right end. Here, you can see that it's a plain bracket. There is no electric lead screw reverse on this inch metric lathe. That's because it was ordered specifically without it. Every now and then you see a machine like this. Now, um, looking at the control panel here, um, it's just got coolant and on and off. It doesn't have the variable speed uh, reverse. So that's one option it doesn't have. Now, it's got the inch metric tailstock. Um, you can tell from this chrome band here. And let's move on over. Okay. Now the top slide here, the compound rest, um, that short dial, that's a plain English dial. Inch metric machine, but it's got inch dials. I can see from this angle that the, the cross feed is two. Okay. Let me, let's get over to some other pictures. Do, let's see. What do we got? That's about the same thing. About the same thing there. Oh, okay. We can get over here and see. Whoa. I hear it when I do that. These, uh, my fingers are big and the computers are small. Let's see. Get back over here. Come on. 
Okay, there's a good view of uh, the cross feed dial. And it's just uh, a, a standard one. Um, and it's not as long as the inch metric. The inch metric ones are quite long. I'll show you that in a little bit. Got the full, full thing here. Well, the reason for that is, oh, so no lead screw reverse. So it doesn't have the, um, you can see the plug there. It doesn't have the um, uh, spindle control lever on the right end of the apron. It's got the spindle control lever at the headstock. Okay. So on a machine like this, you become the lead screw reverse. And uh, the more experienced you get with this machine, the more you uh, learn to hate the uh, electric lead screw reverse. <laughs> That's because there's a lot of slop in that mechanism. And uh, the headstock control switch right here is real positive. And uh, I've got that on the old lathe here, and I've got the apron mounted uh, lead screw reverse control um, on, on the newer machine. Okay, hold on a second, I'll have a drink. Hmm. Getting a little bit hoarse there. Okay. So, we're moving on. Look at a couple more pictures of it. There's the end of it. And it's a chuck. It's missing the stop rod. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that. There's a hole for it. And that would be inch metric too. Okay, uh, let me get this over here. Now, we can look at the uh, condition of the edges of the saddle here, see? It's pretty sharp. So this lathe hasn't really been battered very much, you know? It's really in pretty good shape, judging by that. You know, something bad could happen and the... Um, apron oiler gets plugged and uh, it gets excessive wear on on the ways but it's you know those are things that can happen here this looks a lot like mine you know they they put uh, the pan on nice but it's not baked on you know, like a hard inch kind of a automotive finish. It's just painted on, like uh, just painted on, and uh, they get uh, chipped and brittle, and uh, you know, chips knock stuff off and all that. But overall, this lathe looks pretty good. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to talk about the power requirements in a minute. It's got a digital readout on it, so it doesn't really need the inch metric dials. So the more experienced you get using the machine, uh, like if you're cutting, uh, most of the time, you're going to be cutting English threads. And so you run into metric threads. You don't like break out the metric stuff and you use your experience cutting threads and just cut the metric thread, you know, uh, measure it as needed, whatever. But you don't really need to have those uh, inch metric dials. But maybe they ordered this uh, with in mind that it was going to have a digital readout on it. 1988 machine, you know. All right. Now, let's see if we can get around. It's got a taper attachment, okay? You hope the micrometer things on there, those those get taken, <laughs> get stolen. They're held on by two screws. Okay, you see the lens for the taper attachment. So this is, you know, this is a, a, a good tool room um, example of the way. Now, um, I'm going to uh, get back over here and uh, see if I can find a front. Well... Anyway, so to power this machine, it takes three-phase power and um, 460 volts. And uh, I think they made some 
that were 220, but all of the ones that I've encountered are 460. And uh, it makes it a real challenge to power that in your garage. And I've heard of people doing it, but it's going to cost you. And uh, I'm not sure if a Phase Perfect will do it or not, but I heard it will run one of these uh, regenerative drive machines. So that's something to really consider. So if you just want to run it in your garage, you're going to have to figure maybe up to $10,000 to be able to run this machine. So that'll make it a $46,000 machine. Okay? If you don't have the three-phase. Now, let me get over here real quick. Okay, this old machine here is the vacuum tube. It's got the control disconnect right there. And uh, you can run this machine off a dryer hookup, okay? And uh, the motor generator lathe here, here's with the headstock control right here. You need a, a phase converter to uh, start the motor. But uh, regenerative drive is a different thing. Okay, I'll be back.